And this is the biggest lesson that I made in the permaculture orchard. I would never... Do you want to grow fruit trees? Or are you growing fruit trees? If you are, and if you want to be, you will need some form of mulch under the trees for best results. Here's my biggest mistakes I've made with mulch over the years, so you don't have to repeat them. Stay tuned. Have you ever heard of wood chips as a mulch? Well, Actually, the, most of the research done using wood chip mulch was done right here in Quebec, not, not that far away, and it's a great material. You may have heard of the back to Eden garden method with the wood chips under the trees or in the garden. It is fantastic. And I always say to people now, if you have less than 200 fruit trees, please use wood chips. You can put it on. It's not that much to, that you'll need to source and to apply. And that's how we started the permaculture orchard was we began with a wood chip mulch. We actually put six inches of wood chip and shredded leaves. And that was wonderful. I thought, wow, this is great. I had done lots of projects earlier and found that wood chips really degrade by about an inch a year. So I thought, okay, with six inches we want to keep two or three we'll be good for three years which is really what you need and if you're doing mulch the most important is to put it for the first three to five years in a fruit tree if you have no more mulch after five years it's not critical your tree is already well established but those first years if you don't apply some form of mulch you will end up with or you get a good chance of ending up with some stunted trees, trees that just did not grow enough. So back to wood chips. We put it on and it disappeared. I'd like to show you wood chips right now, but it's so hard to source here. We were actually bringing it in from Montreal, an hour away. And so make sure if you use wood chips or any organic mulch, you can use old hay if you have it available. And that's a great way. I could use that right under this little cherry tree but it's pretty well established already and it's off so whatever organic mulch you use organic being shredded leaves work wood chips work hay old hay even better straw those are all good sources of mulch you say I get bark mulch okay bark mulch is not as good but it can be good too. Put those down and most importantly for the first three years make sure you can get enough. Make sure you can apply it thick enough. I wouldn't go with much less than six inches to start and that's pretty good layer and you want to put them at least two feet wide around your tree. Much less than that and you're really not covering the root zone. So we use the wood chips but the problem was we are not doing 200 trees. We started here with just one acre and we put in several more acres. For one acre, we had applied uh, 120 cubic yards of wood chips. Have you ever spread 120 cubic yards by hand? It's a lot of work. It's a tractor trailer load. And what we found in this soil, because I had been using aerated compost tea for five years before, the soil is so alive that it just eats up organic matter. So that's why I say you need a lot. We put it down, we put it in November by spring. So over winter, that six inches just disappeared. I thought, what? That's not supposed to happen. Well, I never had it happen on other projects, but I never had a soil that was so alive as this soil. So that was the lesson learned there. Then we went to a plastic mulch, not because I wanted to, but because we had to do something or we were going to lose the whole orchard. So that's my lesson. If you're using, like I said, if you're using for less than 300 trees or less, use organic mulch. Make sure you get enough, make sure you can source enough, and make sure you could put it down thickly enough. That's the most important for organic mulch. Number 11. 
one important lesson that I didn't make, but I learned by watching a neighbor who did make it. He didn't consider it a mistake, but he was using a regular plastic film in his vegetables. Now you think, well, that's what everybody does. Yes, that's what they do. But you know what I realized? They use this, and it's actually thinner than garbage bag. So a garbage bag is still, listen, if you're gonna use anything that's thinner than a, this is a tougher garbage bag, if you're losing anything that's thinner than a garbage bag, don't. You think, well, there's some that are biodegradable, okay, but not under fruit trees. Use it in your vegetables, but not in your fruit trees. So he was using thin film, plastic, acres and acres of it, and he would put it in in the spring and tear it up in the fall and burn it. And I thought, wow, that's not a great idea. So that I learned. If you're gonna put plastic mulch, make sure it is tough, not these thinner plastics, please. Number 10, take time to tune or adjust your plow or the tool that you will use to cut this edge here and bury the edge of the plastic. Whatever tool you're using, maybe you're doing it by hand, we did it with a plow and we didn't take time to really get the plow running absolutely straight. You say, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is plastic comes in a certain width and when we were going with the plow, if we hit a rock, boom, and we would move out because we hit a rock and the plow would go in or out. And so sometimes the width of plastic as we laid it ended up getting wider and narrower and it wasn't, it just wasn't straight. This block here, we did take the time, we adjusted it and the results were five times better. So take time. If you're using a shovel to, to cut an edge, sharpen your shovel. Make sure you take the time needed to get your tools working the way they should. A plow can be adjusted so it doesn't pull to one side. It could run so that it's just nice and smooth, nice and straight. So take time to adjust your tool. Here is an example. We happen to hit something so this edge here went wide and the same on the other side that one also went wide well when both of them go wide the result is the plastic wasn't wide enough to overlap in the middle and what ended up happening is we ended up adding a strip of plastic that never worked that well you see we got a grass layer here that's always been growing in so then next lesson we learned Number nine was, if you make a mistake in laying down your edge, for whatever reason, if you make that mistake, take the time right away. Come back, back up, take the time right away to correct that. Because in this case, this is 2009 we put this in. So it's been 11 years. You know what? 11 years later, that mistake is still apparent. And yeah, do it while, while it's being done. Do it while you have the tool, just redo it right away. Don't leave it or you'll have something like this. 10, 20 years later, that mistake will still be apparent. Number eight, this mistake was not planting everything at once. Start in a smaller area, Plant everything. When I mean everything, I mean the trees, the shrubs, and the perennials all at once. I didn't do that. We had trees. We went and planted all the trees for three years for the whole orchard that we've replanted. Well, what happened was by the time we came back in the fourth and fifth year to put in shrubs and then perennials, the trees had gotten big enough that the perennials we put in, especially the shrubs, some of them just didn't grow as well as they could have. They should have grown much bigger. They should have taken advantage of the sun to grow to their full volume, but they didn't. So that stunted a lot of our perennials and shrubs. 
So what I would say is start and get a smaller area completely done. Trees, shrubs, perennials and vines and then expand from there. Don't neglect your perennials or your shrubs. They are an important component and if you wait they just won't do as well as they could have. Number seven. Mistake that I made was not using the properly sized planting or transplanting tool to punch a hole through the plastic and place the transplant or the tuber, in this case Egyptian onion bulbs, a way to get these into the plastic in the smallest hole possible without bending over. Bending over is the key. You think, well, what's the big deal? Well, when you're putting in, the goal would be 10 to 15 perennials per tree, and there's a couple of thousand trees. Do the math. That's a lot of bending over. You think, well, it's still, that's only a few thousand, maybe 20,000 times you have to bend over. Okay, when you're not 20 years old, it's a little different. So make sure you get a tool that you can make a hole, smallest hole possible, and place these in without having to bend over. So if you're doing it all standing up, that's the key. Number six, making holes bigger than the plant we're gonna plant, or the bulb. So that was a mistake. If I make a hole with my dibble transplanter, and it's a pretty big hole, and then I end up putting a tiny little bulb in that hole, what do you think will happen? One, it'll be too deep, but the other thing is there will be a lot of room for other plants to grow, as in this case, where you see grasses have come in and filled in the hole, probably because there was just too much space around the plant. So think of the hole and always aim to get the hole just a little smaller than the plant will be. Here's an example. This garlic chive plant is a great example of the result we want to get. So you see, we have a plant that's in so tight that nothing else but garlic chive can grow. And as that plant got bigger, it actually expanded the hole in the plastic. So don't make holes any bigger than the plant will ultimately become. And if you have a bigger hole, put a bigger plant. If you have a tear, put in a huge plant. That will save you a lot of work in weeding down the road. Number five, mistake I made was not taking the time or choosing the right time of year to make plastic tight to the ground, really snug when it was laid down. These plastic mulch, any of the artificial mulches will have a degree of stretch to them Plus, when they get hot, they expand. So they get bigger and they form these wrinkles. You think, ah, it's a wrinkle. For trees, no big deal. For shrubs, no big deal. For perennials, it could be a big deal if your transplant is little. But for seedlings, it is really a big deal. So try to put your plastic down, ideally on a sunny day. When it's hot out, if it's cold and rainy, not a great time because your plastic will be tight, will be shrunk. And then when it gets hot, it will expand. So try to make sure it's the warmest, not the hottest day of the year, but hot is good. Even take your roll or your material you're gonna put on and put it in a warm place for 24 hours. Let it expand fully so that when you're unrolling it or applying it, it can shrink a bit, but it's already applied the most stretched you can get. Let me show you what happens. You may think, well, how important is that? Well, if I made a hole here and I put pea seedling, and this plastic here is bulged up, what can happen is the, the hole can be raised up to the point where the seedling, as it comes out, doesn't find <laughs> the opening. So that's why in this plastic, here's a hole that didn't, this was all reseeded, but not everyone took because 
sometimes the plastic moved. Tight is right with all these plastics. Remember that, tight is right. Another mistake I made was not applying a pressure on the end of our drip tape lines. We have many miles of drip tape and we use a 15 mil, which is a 15 thousandth of an inch drip tape. It's the toughest one we could find. And we have miles of half inch poly pipe. As long as we used poly pipe, it wasn't a problem because poly pipe will bend a little bit, but if it's applied tight on a wire or if it's laid on the ground, it will not snake. And I could apply that as snaking. We applied the drip tape as recommended, as the manufacturer says to do. We laid it underneath the plastic mulch. Well, what happens with this, and remember, it does get hot. And with black plastic mulch, it gets hotter. So this is a black drip tape. It gets hot and the plastic gets hot. Then what happens is both of them expand. I talked about the plastic mulch expanding and how you want to apply it tight. But the drip tape underneath will also get hot and when it gets hot it expands and on a these are 480 foot runs of plastic and drip tape on that length it will begin to expand and then it snakes all along the row so it moves just because at the end it's simply laid down as it should be as it was recommended to do and that's okay if you're doing vegetables for a year no problem shouldn't have any problems. But when you're applying it many years and it's been here for over 10 years, eventually the snaking fixes, it's, it fixes a place. So one, the end of this should have been, and it was applied about a meter away. So you can imagine there's been a meter or three feet of give in the snake along the way. And the other thing is sometimes in a really hot day, when this drip tape is empty of water, so it's hot, and nothing to cool it down, it will expand sometimes and actually kink. You see that? A kink. When it kinks like this under the plastic, there's no water goes through. Even if water comes up, sometimes that kink does not straighten out. So that's been a, huh, that's a surprise. So what I should have done, and mind you, I did it as recommended, but now I know what I should have done is apply some kind of a shock or bungee cord to the end. So if we attach the bungee cord to the end and stake it down. So when it's laid down, you want your drip tape, just like your plastic mulch, to be tight. So if we had put it on, it doesn't have to be stretched tight, just applied so that when the drip tape is down, it is straight and it is tight. Now, when it tries to snake, it will have to pull on the shock cord and it will come back as soon as there's some water in it to cool it down so it will shrink again. So that would be the recommendation and that's the mistake, but sometimes you only know years later. Number three, a mistake I made early on was planting crops, tuberous crops like turnips, anything that will make a big tuber, planting them in the plastic where they'll expand and they grow and they grow and they stretch the plastic and it makes the plastic bigger. Plus when you harvest them, they actually bulge the plastic. So you end up with a big hole. You think, well, I learned this 15, almost 15 years ago. Why am I still putting these crops in the plastic? Well, I take advantage of a big hole. So here we had a series of big holes in this plastic, the dog, had chased the vole and the vole had torn a, a whole strip in the plastic here. So I used this crop of turnips to, or rutabaga, to use these big holes. And so they're in here. This is our, go see that video on the really easy vegetable bed. So they're in here taking advantage of these big holes. And well, if you have a big hole, and if I had put a small seeded crop in here, I would have to come back and weed. So these rutabaga required zero weeding, produced really well, 
and they've absolutely not just filled the hole but filled this side of the bed consider the size of the hole consider how big it is but if you have no hole you're making a hole don't use turnips or crops that will become really big here's a mistake that I learned early on because <laughs> we saw the results of it rocking too little what do you mean by rocking too little we put plastic mulch and then we put rocks to hold down the plastic mulch all along the seam where two pieces of plastic joined that's the way I'd done it because I had trees planted already and then came back and put the plastic mulch go see the film the permaculture orchard beyond organic I give you all the techniques of how we laid out this permaculture orchard two little rocks what happens is if you just put a little rock here and another little rock there it's not enough we do get strong winds and the wind will catch underneath and eventually open up like we have here we have an open area and what happens when it's open well here we were pretty lucky but you see it won't take long you'll get a whole lot of plants getting established in that area between two pieces of plastic now there's a lot of weeding to do to be able to close the plastic back up and rock again so the lesson in here was to rock a lot finally number one and this is the biggest lesson that I made in the permaculture orchard I would never do this technique again you say well if you saw the film the permaculture orchard you see how I did it and to say that I wouldn't do it again well I would not apply mulch again after planting trees that was the big lesson it's so much work there are now tools that will apply mulch with the drip tape underneath the mulch plastic mulch and when I went to see the place that rents these this tool he said well it's $250 a day and no problem they can do the full 12 acres in a day well the whole farm is 12 acres it took us weeks of work to apply this plastic mulch and to hear that what it could have been done in a day yes it could be done in a day so if you are doing acres consider seriously the idea of having a mulch bed layer come in and apply mulch and drip tape in one pass over your acres and then come in and plant trees shrubs perennials in the smallest holes possible so you want to get the smallest trees probably even better than getting shrubs just use cuttings and put them all in after the plastic mulch is laid that was a big lesson I did it if you're stuck with an orchard that you have planted already and you're stuck now to have to go to a plastic mulch because you have more than 200 trees or you can't source enough wood chips as I said most cases you can go very well with wood chips but if you have to resort to plastic mulch and your trees are already planted then do this technique otherwise have it laid out for you first and then come in and plant your orchard thanks for watching intrigued check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard have trees already pruningcourse.com subscribe please check out some of the other videos or playlists there's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye.